No, we didn't know each other before the project. Uh, the first I heard was getting an email from my agent saying that the book was being turned in, that the drama was going to be turned into a novel, and uh, would I like to audition for it, which is <laughs> what I had to do. I had to turn the first act of the drama into three or four chapters and then send it off to see what happened and then wait for a month to get the answer mm. to find out whether I'd got the gig. Sorry for making you wait that long. Yeah, a month. That was a long time, wasn't it? Was. It was. Yeah, Sorry. It was very stressful. That's, it was probably my fault. I expect so. Yeah. I think what convinced me that that Erin was the right writer for it, 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 she had such emotion in the writing and she was right in the heads of the characters straight away. There's the stuff with Beth in the, the early acts of the of the episode and, and it just really took me on a journey and sort of told me things about the characters I didn't know and it was so beautiful. And, and then the, I think it was the last three sentences of that chapter talking about the effect it had on Beth and the, um, the imagery that she was using. It was just everything. It just felt very uh, inhabited. The world felt very um, of Erin's creation. So it was amazing to have it reflected back. I was a huge Broadchurch fan. I was hooked from the opening sequence. If you, when you, um, for those who are familiar with it, um, which was is millions of you, <laughs> um, there's uh, the opening sequence. We, the, the camera cuts from um, the shot of the coastline. You've got cliff, beach, sky, sea, all in a stripe. And when Beth sits up in bed in the first frame we see of her, the headboard behind her and the painting behind her in her room is a perfect visual echo of that image. And it was that one piece of, that one little quality, that one part of production that just told me I was in for something special before I'd even heard a, a line of dialogue. Um, and I knew, I knew um, with Jodie Whittaker, Olivia Colman and David Tennant carrying it that uh, it was in safe hands anyway. You know, they don't, they don't tend to really put their feet wrong. Um, so I was, I was kind of sold almost from before anybody started talking. And I was gripped. It was the first thing that I actually watched. I'd just had a baby a couple of weeks before, and it was the first thing that I managed to watch from start to finish while I was on maternity leave, sometimes watching it at three o'clock in the morning, feeding my child. And it was, it was testament to how gripping it was that I actually managed to, you know, not blink throughout it, even though I was on about two hours sleep uh, a night at the time. I'm going to tell James, the director, about the headboard thing because that, he talked about that shot. For that, that's one of his creations, and he will be delighted that that hooked you on the show. Yeah, it absolutely. It was very did. good. Yeah, it's the first thing I noticed. And then, of course, when they did start talking, the dialogue, uh, um, which isn't, you know, dialogue isn't always perfect in television drama, and <laughs> sometimes, sometimes great actors can elevate wooden dialogue. But when you have got perfect dialogue. And when it's matched to fantastic actors, um, that's, you know, that's what really sold it for me. And Chris talks just now about the emotion that I was able to put into the book. But it was like, when you're watching those performances, it was like taking dictation. I didn't have to think, you know, I never had to ask myself what they were thinking or what they were feeling. Because the subtext was just there on their faces, played out. So in that respect, it was just easy, easy to get inside. What's interesting in television now is that the stories and the shapes of series, the shape of form of narrative in television is becoming more novelistic and that eight hour expanse to, to bring that into the shape of a novel with, and we always talked about it as uh, the episodes are chapters within the novel of the series if you like um, and in a way there'll be volumes within the series which make up the greater series. Um, so it was always very interesting and I thought, I thought I thought it was just an interesting process to talk about and to see whether it might be possible. And then once Erin started working on it, it became, it, it just felt like it worked and it felt like it could offer something different, which I think the novel does. It's a different experience, but it's of a piece with the, the show. The script is very novelistic anyway. I've seen, I've read quite a few screenplays over the years and um, they don't always have beautiful directions, but there are parts of the novel where I've lifted straight from your <laughs> oh, directions you. to camera. You know, I'm quite bossy in my stage directions. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I knew I knew from page one of the script that here was the work of a control freak, uh, which, <laughs> which also made it really easy. But, you know, there are you know down down to the positioning of furniture sometimes in the room yeah. and the exact you know um, in some in some of the stage directions you're telling the sun where to shine. Yes, um, yes. And that made it very easy for me to you know even if I didn't have the screenplay to even if I didn't have the the television program to work from um, what I was looking at on script was often easy to just cut almost cut and paste and turn into the novel so there was a lot more to flesh it out than just the dialogue on the page and that was very helpful.